Okay, we're uh, going through demos of the material design version 10 uh, of Angular, and we're going to go through some of the components. And so what I want to do now is I want to drill down into the autocomplete component set in the documentation, and we're going to review and go through fine detail uh, of, of the... Um, the autocomplete. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the simplest example of the autocomplete, which is this one down here. Okay, so this is a simple autocomplete, and basically uh, out of the box, it's doing something very, very simple. It is basically got a form and a field, and and when you click on the field, basically this drop down of options uh, is presented. It's a panel with a list of strings, and 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 it's considered the options uh, rendered in the panel. So notice the the item is not uh, n none of the items are highlighted. So there's no default value here. So if I hit return, nothing's really happening. If I hit the down key and I hit return, and then I basically see one of the options are selected and it appears in the field. Now, there is a form with a width. There is a form field, which is also stretched within that width. And... And um, we could take a look at the code very quickly here in the example. Okay, so let's 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 do that. Okay, so first we have this this thing um, uh, which which is a form, and there's a class associated with it. This class is the styling of the form. It's defining the width to be a certain width. Let's say 500 pixels, whatever it may be. And then we have this mat form field. Now the mat form field has a class associated with it as well. Uh, this thing happens to be 100% of, of the width, which is filling up the whole width of the form. But the goal of this thing is to style uh, the components inside of it. So in this case here, the map form field has a certain class, and that class has certain styles, and all the input elements in that map form field uh, will adhere to that style. It turns out that there's just one input field here, so uh, it's not as complex, but we'll take a look at the, the styles and take a look at, at how to affect that. Okay, now notice there is an input element inside of the form field. There, It does have a type of text. There's a placeholder pick me. There's an area label so screen readers can filter through that and do the right things for uh, visibly disabled people. And notice there's a directive here called mat input. Basically, that is saying, oh, here, I have an HTML5 input field. And now it's um, I have this directive here that says mat input, which says, oh, it is a material design input, so my mat form field can style it. And also, I have this attribute form control, uh, uh, which 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 is uh, the uh, it's pointing to to a form control in the in the uh, TypeScript object instance variable uh, called my control. And 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 the interesting thing is there's this thing called mat autocomplete, which is an input to this input element is an input to the mat input style input element and and it's it's pointing to auto now what is auto auto is a reference okay to this template okay so this notation here this hash auto creates the reference variable auto so the input, the mat input input tag can point to that as its panel of options. Okay, so 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 now when you look at the the, the panel of options, it's called a mat autocomplete tag, or say it encompasses a template. 
and and and, and it is an auto, a mat autocomplete, and it has a list of mat options. Now the mat option um, has this structural directive and a star ng4, which basically goes through this iterative loop and renders these mat options inside my mat autocomplete element, and and it it lets it basically iterates, and for each um, option in this options array, it it looks at the option and it set and and it could you could you could choose it, and it would implicitly define the value um, uh, to be that particular option element. Okay, so 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 in this uh, rendering of this, as each option in the options array, it's showing the option. And when you select it, uh, that value um, is set to the particular option. Value being the value of the input tag. Okay, so 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 now we see what the form looks like. Um, and, and notice, uh, let me go back here and, and take a look at this thing here. Um, notice the, the pick one is the placeholder. And when I click on it, this panel comes up. This autocomplete panel comes up, and and it does have a list of options. And as I navigate um, and move my purse over them, each option gets highlighted. When I click one of them, the option value uh, gets gets uh, placed inside my text field. Okay, so it's it's pretty much a um, a, a, a combination of, of several different things: material design, HTML5, Angular, etc. And and it, it's this integrated solution to give you something that functions the way you want it to function. Uh, but it's the most basic. Uh, autocomplete example that, that that appears in a documentation, and and probably it, it's the simplest one you could you could you could possibly think of, I would imagine. Um, so so let's take a look at the the, the TypeScript. So the TypeScript uh, is this object object. I kind of kind of view it as a, a backing object instance of the template, but the truth is the template and the class are are are, are in some in some sense. One, there's a there's a separation of concerns there, and there's dynamic binding and there's directives and it, it's it's one object. It's a component template. But anyway, the object um, uh, uses the component tag to define uh, the selector. Uh, the selector. This is the thing that um, um, the, the root component uh, element that's used in the index.html. Uh, to define the UI component tree of my Angular application, this thing has to be um, uh, bootstrapped. Um, this this has to be bootstrapped by the, the main app module that Angular CLI uh, uh, is is defining in in the Angular.json file. So it it, it does have a a form control uh, in the object instance and and there is an options array which which has these values in it. So so it, it is it is pretty much a um, this particular class when it gets instantiated it, it has that that form control instance. In it, it, it's an instance which has a form control attribute and it has an options array. The state of this object after it gets instantiated um, when you're rendering uh, the, the the the, um, the view it is basically having some backing state to it. This is this is the backing object. The style sheet, um, and like I said, this this is example form. Um, and now notice the HTML file has this example form to it, class associated with it, and there's an example form with a minimum width, a maximum width, and a width of 100%. And and if you look at the uh, mat form field, it has this example full width, and that class example full width 
is just saying, okay, fill up 100%. But it's inside this guy, so it's filling up 100% of this, which is 500 pixels, whatever it may be. Okay, so so that that is the uh, coding example. Let's go to the um, let's go to Stack Blitz and take a look at this. And let's just tweak a couple of things dynamically. So we're sure that we know what we're talking about. We know we understand uh, different things associated with this example. And, and, and so just to review, your package JSON has all your packages. When you do an NPM install, you install everything you need to run this example. Your angular.json file is discussing, um, describing everything in your project. Like what is the source code directory? Where's the root app directory? Uh, what, what what's your index.html? What's your main app module, etc.? You got your TS config for your TypeScript config, which basically says I'm dealing with a TypeScript project here. And if you look at the um, the main um, module, you'll see uh, towards the bottom. You really uh, uh, Angular CLI is is saying that this app is going to be the application, it's going to get bootstrapped, and it's going to have this root component, autocomplete, simple example. And these are all the packages and modules I'm importing. These are the ones, uh, everything in these modules could possibly be accessible to my components within the application. And my index is basically rendering the root component. And, and um, my example, um, my root component is this particular component, and this particular component uh, is saying that here you have an annotation component, and there's a selector autocomplete, and and here's my template, and my template's right here. Uh, there's a separation of concerns going on here. Um, I have my template, I have my backing up class, and I have my, my style sheet. So uh, I, I really, this is really nice architecture. And then I have my export class, auto complete simple example. Uh, and, and when this object gets instantiated, um, it, it's going to create a new form control instance. And this options array is going to get allocated some memory to have these values one, two, three. So now notice one, two, three is showing up here. Uh, um, if I wanted to, to say one here, it would say one. Um, so let's let's now look at the template. So the template, um, the template basically is pretty straightforward. We already discussed this. And, and so, um, once again, this is form um, class outside. It has this example form class. Let's go look at the style sheet. Let's say this width is 100%. It's 500 pixels. Let's color the background of this thing real quick. Um, just, just to give us some... Um, just to give us some color here. I'm going to say it's powder blue. Eh, let's see what this gets. let's see what this gives. Okay, so we got a turquoise background. Hmm. Now um, let's see. The maximum width is 500. Uh, the minimum width is 150. So let's see what happens when we stretch this thing. See, it doesn't get larger. Uh, let's see if we make this thing smaller. Yeah, well, it's hard to tell. Uh, but it's the min the minimum width is 150. So. What happens if we change this to 300? Yeah, it gets smaller. So let's let's not do that right now. Let, let me uh, go back to this and let me take a look at um, uh, the template again. And here, my map form field class has a style, and that style. Um, let's take a look at that style. This says 100%. Let, let's 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 do the background of this thing, and I'm gonna say it's light cyan. No, I'm not. I'm gonna say it's light gray, 
and let's suppose it's going to be 80% of the width. Okay, so now we're starting to understand uh, the you know the embedded embedded objects. Now, now like I said, um, th this is not of much importance, but but you, you do need to understand what's happening here. Um, and this particular map form field is really just to style, you know, the way my field, the way my field looks, and 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 the style of it. So I won't get, we won't get into it right now. But um, but, but I'm just I'm just poking around here just to see, or uh, and try to understand a little bit more about the example. So. So let's let's see. The input type is text. Pick one. We know we could say pick the one. Pick the one. Um, once again, area label is for uh, screen readers, uh, and and right now this is binding the value, this to value, uh, to this form control. So the input. Um, for form control, for this input variable is form control, and so in this object, um, this particular form control does have a state. Now I didn't initialize it. I didn't initialize the state. Um, I don't know if we should can or should do that, but I could have initialized the state of my form control. Which, which is um, the reason why I did that is because um, I'm trying to convince you that that um, my input variable is binding its value to this form control state, and so um, if I uh, did this, um, then now that form control has that state of that string, which is two. Um, so so let's let's go back here and, and remove that. And, and once again, um, the mat autocomplete is auto. Uh, let's see if we removed it, what would happen? Nothing, because there's no panel associated with the input field. And, and when we put this in there, then the input attribute to this mat input element is this reference variable auto, which which right here, this reference variable is associated, is pointing to this template. So that's why when we click there, that panel comes up, that mat autocomplete panel comes up, and we could choose one. Um, and notice, um, notice what's happening here is this template, this template um, is rendering these three markup fragments uh, for these mat options because it's using a structural directive to uh, uh, iterate through the option in this options array. Remember the options array had this array. And so I'm showing the elements of the array uh, with this structural directive. And, and this, this interpolation operator uh, directive, whatever you want to call this thing, is basically showing the state of my of my option. So now the value here is three, uh, and 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 I'm showing um, um, uh, the three in this option, um, uh, and when I click on it, that three is set as the value, uh, is binding to the value, which then goes into the form control of the input field. So anyway, I, I just wanted to, um, uh, basically show you that little example, and let's move on to more sophisticated examples.